In this video, we're going to be leveling or tramming the bed on an Ender 3 S1 Pro. This is quite a quick and easy process, but one that can cause some issues if not done right. Make sure you stay all the way to the end on this one because there's one critical step that most people miss. And if you don't get it right, then the whole of the rest of the process won't actually have any effect at all. The first thing to do is turn your printer on and move the X axis gantry up out of the way by using your printer's axis move function in the ready menu. Move it up to around 80 millimeters or higher just to get it out of the way. Next, back off all of your bed adjusters till they're no longer compressing the springs and then tighten each one gently until they just start to compress the springs. The easiest way to do this is give them a little spin and let them stop on their own. This is our zero point where none of our bed springs have any preload, that is, they're not compressed at all. Now push down on the front of the bed in the middle until the adjusters just touch the base cover. Hold it there while you spin the adjusters again until they stop on their own. Do the same on the back. You should now still have roughly equal tension on all of your springs, but they are all compressed a little bit or have preload. If you want to add more preload to your springs, then repeat this process, just being careful to try and keep equal pressure on the front and the back when you do. Also, don't go so far that there are no longer any gaps between the coils on the spring. This is called going coil bound and effectively makes the spring into a solid spacer. Now we've set the base spring preload, we can move on to tramming the bed. Before we can do this though, we need to make sure that the nozzle is clean and no filament is going to get in the way. Press the manual tab at the top of the ready menu, then change your nozzle temperature up to whichever temperature you need to melt the filament you have in there. If you haven't used your printer yet and this is the first time you're setting it up, then you can bypass warming the nozzle and only do the bed. I was last printing with PLA, so I'll set the nozzle to 200 degrees. While we're here, we may as well warm up the bed for the next step. Set the bed temperature to around 50 to 60 degrees. Return to the home screen so you can see when the nozzle has reached the temperature you've asked for. Once it's hot, remove your filament by depressing the extruder lever and then pushing your filament in a little bit before pulling it out quickly. Cut the melted end off so it's ready to go back in when you're finished. Now using a piece of rag or cloth, wipe your nozzle until you're happy that it's clean or at least clean enough so that there's no longer any filament on the end. Now you can return to the ready and manual menus and set your nozzle temperature to zero. Leaving your bed heating, enter the settings menu and then press level. Your printer will move your nozzle to the middle of the bed and then down to where it believes the Z axis zero point is. At this point, we could press auto level and let the printer create a mesh off our roughly level bed, but that's making the printer do some work, which can cause inaccuracies. Instead, press the auxiliary level button and then adjust your nozzle height up or down until it is just touching or there is the tiniest gap between the nozzle and the bed. Press number two on the screen and the nozzle will move to the front left corner of the bed. Don't worry if it touches, the nozzle isn't hot and it should just push the bed down as long as you didn't do the bed springs too tight. Next, instead of on the screen, move the bed adjuster that's now under the nozzle until you have the same tiny gap between the nozzle and the bed. You can use a piece of paper or a feeler gauge for this, but you'll be surprised how accurate you can get it just by eye, and it's a lot quicker. Do the same for positions three, four, and five, and then go to each position one more time. By the time you've gone around the bed twice, it should be virtually perfect. Now press the auto level button on the screen and then start. Your printer will probe multiple positions on the bed and create what's known as a bed mesh. This should only take a couple of minutes and when it's done, we'll go back and do a final check of the Z offset. Go back into the auxiliary level tab and press button one. This will put your nozzle to the Z axis zero position in the middle of your bed. Again, on the screen, adjust this up or down so that your nozzle is just touching your bed. I had to move mine up a little bit at this point, but you may have to do something different. Now we've saved a bed mesh and set our Z offset, the printer will use this mesh when it starts a print, right? Wrong. Well, it depends. What we need to do is check if your slicer is telling the printer to use its bed mesh when it starts a print. In Cura and Creality Slicer, go into the machine settings and look for the start G code. If you don't see a G29 or M420 code, then your printer is not using its mesh. The good news is you can manually add one of these codes yourself. Just hit enter at the end of the G28 line and type either G29 if you want the printer to take a new mesh before every print, or what I prefer to add is M420 S1Z10. This tells the printer to use the bed mesh saved into slot number one of its internal memory. The Z10 part tells it to blend out any compensation it's made for an uneven bed over 10 layers. Anything you slice from now on will use the bed mesh when laying down the first layer. Now we can be sure that our printer is going to use our newly created bed mesh, we can reheat the nozzle, load our filament and see how it prints. One last final tip to really dial in that first layer is to watch your first layer going down and then if needed, adjust your Z offset live while the print's running. On the S1 Pro, just touch the top of the screen and you'll enter the parameter settings menu. In here, you'll see options for changing the temperatures, 
print and fan speeds, but also the Z axis compensation. In here, you can adjust the Z offset live while the print is running. You should only ever do this on the first layer and only in very small increments to allow for slightly different materials. If you want to see how to fix a hot end clog on an Ender 3 S1 Pro, then click here. Or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.